Okay class, today we're in section 4.4, write linear equations in standard form. Section 4.4, write linear equations in standard form. Before, you wrote equations in point-slope form. Now you will write equations in standard form. Key vocabulary, standard form. Recall, recall that the linear equation ax plus by is equal to c is in standard form where a, b, and c are real numbers and a and b are not both zero. All linear equations can be written in standard form. Example 1. Write equivalent equations in standard form. Write two equations in standard form that are equivalent to 2x minus 6y is equal to 4. Solution. To write one equivalent equation, multiply each side by 2. So, you're going to multiply the entire equation on this side and that side by 2. So, 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times a negative 6y is a negative 12y. And 2 times 4 is 8. To write another equivalent equation, multiply each side by 0.5 or by a half. So, half of 2 is 1. So, you end up with just 1x. Half of a negative 6y is a negative 3y and half of 4 is 2. Alright so in essence then what they're saying is to write an equivalent equation in standard form if the equation is already in standard form ax plus by is equal to c you can multiply by any number you want to come up with an equivalent fraction I mean with an equivalent equation multiply by any number you want to come out with a equivalent equation. For example, if you multiply by 3, so long as you multiply by 3 here, here, and here, you're okay. So if you multiply by 3, then this would become 6x. This would become a negative 18y. And this would become 12. Example 2. Write an equation from a graph. Here's our graph here. So we got a straight line and they're using points 1, 1, and 2, negative 1. Write an equation in standard form of the line shown. Solution. Step 1. Calculate the slope. And we find that m is equal to 1 minus a negative 2 over 1 minus 2. And that's equal to 3 over negative 1, which is equal to a negative 3. All right. Now, once again, for those of us who may have forgotten, you have to know how to solve the slope on your own. They're not going to break it down for you in detail. All right. But here we go once again. All right. What I do is I label the points. <coughs> So this is my x2, this is y2, x1, y1. Okay, so now plug that into my equation for slope. y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. All right, now what's the y2 value? The y2 value was 1, so that's where I got the 1 from. I'll put it there for you also. Next, I got the y1 value. What's the y1 value? Negative 2. That's where I got the negative 2 from. You see it right there also. All right, the x2 value is 1. That's where the 1 comes from. Put it there also. And the x1 value is 2. That's where the 2 comes from. x1 is 2. x1 is 2. Right there. All right, now, so what is a negative times a negative? That's going to be a positive. So right here, you're really saying 1 plus 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. And here we get 1 minus 2, which is a negative 1. So what is 3 divided by a negative 1? A negative 3. So our slope then is a negative 3. Step 2. Write an equation in point-slope form. Use 1 and 1. Write an equation in point-slope form. Use the point 1, 1. So we get y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x, um, x sub 1. That's point-slope form. We plug in. So y minus 1, because we're going to use 1 here. We said our slope was a negative 3. And we bring that x down. And x of 1, we said was 1. So this is the equation we're working with. Now notice, uh, what used to be an entire lesson on point slope is now just a step in this particular section. That's why it's important to go through and learn everything you should learn and not take any shortcuts. All right. Once again, what used to be a lesson is now simply a step. 
All right, now in step three, we want to rewrite the equation in standard form. When we rewrite it in standard form, we will end up with 3x plus y is equal to 4. Notice ax plus by is equal to 4. That's standard form. ax plus by is equal to 4. Now that's the form we wanted in, and that's what we have there. Now for those of us who don't see how we got that, once again, all we're doing is solving an equation, put it in the form that we want to. So right now we're going back to lesson 2.8. All right, here we go. We got y minus 1 is equal to negative 3 times x minus 1. We want to get the x and the y on the same side. We want to get the constant on the side by itself. So I bring down my y minus 1. The negative 3 I'm going to distribute. So a negative 3 times x is a negative 3x. A negative 3 times a negative 1 is a positive 3. All right, so next I'm going to move this negative 1 to the other side because I know the y is supposed to be over there. So the y is on this side. So I'm going to, the y is already in the right position. So I'm going to say plus 1, plus 1. So when I do that, that's going to cancel out. And I'm left with just y. So y is equal to a negative 3x plus 4. 3 plus 1 will give you 4. So now the x, I'm going to move that to this side. I want to move that to this side. So to get rid of the x, I got a negative 3x there. So I'm going to add 3x to both sides. Plus 3x plus 3x. And when I do that, y plus 3x, I cannot combine those. So all I can do is represent it. So I wrote it as 3x plus y. Now you may have written y plus 3x. It's the same thing, but 3x plus y. Now on this side, the negative 3x with the positive 3x, that's going to cancel out. So I'm left with just 4. So at this point, I have 3x plus y is equal to 4. And it's the same thing we have right there. It's in the correct form. ax plus by is equal to 4. Horizontal and vertical lines. Recall that equations of horizontal lines have the form y is equal to a. Equations of vertical lines have the form x is equal to b. You cannot write an equation for a vertical line and slope in a set form or point slope form because the vertical line has no slope. However, you can write an equation for a vertical line in standard form. Example 3. Write an equation of the line. Write an equation of the specified line. A. The blue line. B. The red line. Solution. A. The y coordinate of the given point on the blue line is negative 4. This means that all points on the line have a y coordinate of negative 4. An equation of the line is y is equal to negative 4. Okay, look at the blue line. Notice that on the y axis is located at 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And notice, no matter where you go on this line, the y value is always negative 4. No matter what the x value is, the y value is always negative 4. So therefore, the equation is y is equal to negative 4. B, the x coordinate of the given point on the red line is 4. This means that all points on the line have an x coordinate of 4. An equation of the line is x is equal to 4. Take a look at the red line. Notice on the x axis is located at 1, 2, 3, 4. Notice, no matter what the y value is, the x value remains at 4. No matter what the y value is, the x value remains at 4. So the equation for this line is x is equal to 4. Another way to look at this is using the slope-intercept form to find an equation of the horizontal line gives you y is equal to 0 times x minus 4 or y is equal to negative 4. Same thing. Example 4. Complete an equation in standard form. Find the missing coefficient in the equation of the line shown. Write a complete equation. So we're going to use this graph. See our line there? And we're looking at that point right there. All right. Now they give us this equation, ax plus 3y is equal to 2. They want us to find out what the a value is. We've got to find out what the a value is based on the information from the graph and also using uh, standard form. Solution. Step 1. Find the value of a. Substitute the coordinates of the given point for x and y in the equation 
and then solve for a. So write the equation ax plus 3y is equal to 2. All right. Now look at our coordinate, negative 1 for x, 0 for y. So we got a times negative 1 for x plus 3 times 0 for y. All right, now what's 3 times 0? 3 times 0 is 0. So then that would disappear. All right, 3 times 0 is 0. So that's gone. Now with that being gone, we now have a times a negative 1. Well, a times a negative 1 is negative a. So we got negative a is equal to 2. But we don't want to solve for a negative a. We got to get a positive a. So that means we, get, we got to get rid of that negative. All right, now we got to remember now what number is in front of that negative. The number in front of that negative is a 1. There's a 1 right there. All right, so that's negative 1. So to get rid of that negative 1, we got to divide by a negative 1. So that means right here we're going to divide by negative 1 and divide by negative 1 on this side. Now negative 1 divided by negative 1 goes to a positive 1. So that's a by itself. And then 2 divided by a negative 1 is equal to a negative 2. Alright, so now that we know that a is equal to a negative 2, we can actually complete the equation. So we're going to take negative 2 and put that in place of that a right there. And we found out what the a was. So our answer ends up being negative 2x plus 3y is equal to 2. Example 5. Solve a multi-step problem. Library. Your class is taking a trip to the public library. You can travel in small and large vans. A small van holds 8 people and a large van holds 12 people. You, your class could fill 15 small vans and 2 large vans. A. Write an equation in standard form that models the possible combinations of small vans and large vans that your class could fill. B. Graph the equation from part A. C. List several possible combinations. Solution. A. Write a verbal model, then an equation. Capacity of small van, 8, times number of small vans, S, plus capacity of large vans, 12, times number of large vans, L, is equal to people on the trip, P. Because your class could fill 15 small vans and 2 large vans, use 15 and 2 as the S and L, L values to substitute in the equation 8S plus 12L is equal to P. That came from that. So, in place of S we put 15. In place of L we put 2. So we get 8 times 15 plus 12 times 2 is equal to P. Okay, after multiplying 8 times 15 and then 12 times 2, adding them both together, we come up with 144 is equal to P. So substitute 144 for P in the equation 8S plus 12L is equal to P. So now the equation is 8S plus 12L is equal to 144. And this models the possible combinations. B. Find the intercepts of the graphs or using y equals mx plus b. Alright? So now to find the intercepts, find the intercepts of the graphs. Substitute 0 for s. So in place of s we put 0. So 8 times 0 goes to 0. So now you're left with 12l is equal to 144. To get l by itself, you're going to divide by 12 here and divide by 12 there. You might want to show your steps there. So 12 divided by 12 is 1, so that's gone. 144 divided by 12, that's also 12. So L is equal to 12. All right, next substitute 0 for L. So now we got the L being 0. So we can find the S intercept. So 8S plus 12 times 0 is equal to 144. 12 times 0, that's gone. We want to get the S by itself, so we divide by 8 on both sides. 8 divided by 8 goes to S. Because 8 divided by 8 is 1, and you left with just S. 144 divided by 8 is 18. So we got L is 18, L, L is 12, and S is 18. We plot 12 here, that's 0, 12, and we plot 18 there, that's 0, 18. 0, 12, and then 18, 0.